them together. Check, check, check. Good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Good. How many of you love camp? What's that? Oh, okay. Here, Father, we want to say thank you so much for this offering. Everything it represents, every uh, hour of work and labor and, and faith and promise that goes into this offering. God, we're praying now blessing right back at each giver. As you said, you're able to multiply so there's more than enough. For every need, bless each one tonight and let this offering multiply itself all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. I just want to say how much I love Bible camp. Amen. I used to go to Bible camp. Every, and get, I got saved every single year of Bible camp. <laughs> Since I was about six or seven, I'd go to Bible camp and uh, I'd just get saved. I, I just couldn't resist every single summer. And then, of course, I had a little difficulty for the other 11 months. When I was not at Bible camp, but uh, it finally took when I was 18 years old, so I'm thankful. But it feels so good to be at camp. Come on. And we're, there we go. And uh, what a prophetic spirit here, isn't it? Come on, Stacy. what are you feeling? Oh, it's, uh, um, it's awesome. I just want to explain myself a little bit before I start. Um, <clears throat> we had a... Um, just, you know, first of all, I always like to do this before I, I prophesy or minister. I like to submit myself to the leadership of the house. And because I always say, First Peter says that they have to give an account for your souls, you know, when they have spiritual authority. But I just blow in and out of town. So if I ever say anything that they disagree with, they're, they're right and I'm wrong. And I, I love the whole Bible. I always feel like if we did the whole Bible... You know, then we'd love one another at the end of the day, and there'd be, you know, order and all that. And um, my husband and I experienced as Baptists. We, I came out of Baptist seminary. He came out of Baptist Bible College and seminary too. And an uh, uh, extraordinary move of the Holy Spirit, kind of a mini Toronto, those uh, before Toronto in 1987-88 in our Baptist church. Wesley's written about that here. And uh, the whole th uh, thing about a visitation of the Holy Spirit. And I wrote a book uh, called Ecstatic Prophecy, which is um, uh, a theological uh, and historical uh, refutation of, uh, for, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because, uh, as you all know, I'm, I'm speaking to the converted here, but uh, when, when, when Jesus said, go wait till you receive power from on high, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he told them to go wait till they would receive power from on high. And when they received power from on high, Peter's explanation was this. These people are not drunk like you think, but they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on. And, Come when, on. And, and what happens when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit? Come on. This is what Joel was talking about. Right, right, In the last right. days I will pour out my Spirit Come on. on all flesh. So what began with 120 is going to become, it's not going to cease like we were taught in seminary. No. It is actually going to increase, increase until it happens to all flesh. Increase. And what is going to happen Check. on believers and unbelievers Check. alike, it's Jesus, happening Jesus, all Jesus. over the world. It's happening in Iran, Iraq. It's happening yeah. to Muslims. Yeah. It's happening yeah. to Buddhists. God is pouring right. out His Spirit. They are dreaming dreams. Check. They are having visions. They are prophesying men and women. It's irrespective of age, gender, um, right. and, and uh, people group. And this is happening. And, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is what happened, you know, to the Apostle Paul. Boom! You know, he was on his way to kill Christians. At massive unbeliever, persecutor of the church. And boom! He hears the audible voice of God. He sees the blinding light. He falls off the horse. Uh, and it was like physically as well as, you know, of all the senses. Touched. You know, filled with the Spirit. So, filling of the Spirit is not just in our mind. Yeah. It often happens in our bodies. It happened to Isaiah, Jeremiah. Uh, you can't, you know, the, all the Old Testament major prophets, Samuel, the school of the prophets, you know, Peter on the day of Pentecost, John in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And it actually physically, you know, they're filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? Wow. So I'm just saying that if I shake and it bothers you, close your eyes. Uh, uh, 
Because, uh, you know, it's, it's very biblical in the New Testament to judge, to weigh, to test prophecies. Um, and so I just welcome you to judge the words. They're generally very uh, coherent and easy to, to, to judge. Um, so I, I just want to submit myself ahead of time. But really, I am, uh, when I was sitting there asking the Lord and praying today, um, I, I, I feel like everything that I really had in my heart to speak has already been said. So I'm merely adding an exclamation point yeah. to what the Spirit of God has been sharing. You know, we all prophesy in part. We bring our part, and you start to see the parts weaving together into a, into a whole. But um, I felt when uh, Pastor Russ said, or Apostle Russ said, this is the 12th year. Wow. Yeah. I felt like the Lord said to me, and I want to submit this first of all to the leadership team here. But, um, but I, I, I heard him say, I have been watching you. And I have been testing you. And over these 12 years I have been watching what you would do with finances. Wow. And I have tested you in the area of money. Because if you cannot be faithful with unrighteous money, how can I give you true spiritual riches? So I watched you, and I tested you, and I have found you faithful. And I say, well done, good and faithful servant. Wow, 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 wow. Come on. And then I yeah. watched to see what you would do. With the gifts that I gave you. Come on. I watched you when it was easy. And I watched you when it was hard. And I watched you be faithful in season and out of season. Yeah. And so I say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. And because you have been faithful these 12 years. I am about to massively multiply your anointing. Wow, 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 wow. Come on. I'm not only going to double it like I did in the parable of the talents. I'm going to take of those who have not been faithful with their talents because you have been extraordinarily faithful with your finances, with your gifts, with your understanding, with your generosity. You have been extraordinarily faithful. So I'm going to take in this next season of those who have not been faithful with their gift, and I'm going to even add it unto your gift. Come on. Yeah. And you are standing in a strategy room. Wow. This is a strategy room. And the power of prophecy is going to fall not just on the fivefold, on the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists. I see that God, this is in a strategy room and an equipping center. And all fivefold are going to be coming to this to this center, to this center, and they will be instructed on the nature of their gift so that they too can go out and multiply it. But it's much, 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 much more than that. I am also going to give you authority. Wow. In what has been known as the seven mountains. <laughs> Business. And there will be those that come into this room, and you are even here tonight businessmen that in this environment you will be getting ideas for business strategic ideas for multiplication of finances for yeah. kingdom finances there is a business anointing on this house yeah right right a media anointing a family anointing and I am going to give you authority in all seven mountains. People will come here and they will go out of here with revelation from heaven. How to infiltrate and how to take those mountains in the regions round about. But even more than that, I see them. Red and yellow, black and white. I see nations coming here. Wow. 
I see gatherings of First Nations. I see gatherings of different communities and different ethnos. And I see them even coming from other countries to this place to be instructed, to have a gathering time, to have a time of revelation, to go back to their nation and take territory for my kingdom. For this whole center is about advance, advance, wow. advance, advance. Do, 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 do. Charge! Oh! And I am commissioning you yeah. to charge. And on this 12th and governmental year, the fathers and the mothers are in place. And the next generation, I am sending them to you. Some are already in your midst. But I am going to strategically align the next generations of apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. I see the young, the young, the young, the young, the next generation. They're coming, they're coming. Some are already here, but there are those you do not even know yet that I am going to sovereignly bring to you to disciple. And this faithfulness... This extraordinary faithfulness. I have watched you with little, and I have watched you with much. And I am well pleased. Well done, good and faithful servants. You are about to enter into a time of extraordinary kingdom joy, where many people are coming to me. Many people will be coming to me. Many people who do not even know me yet from the seven mountains, from the different nations. It's harvest time in my kingdom. And while the natural world is shrinking, and while people in the natural are shrinking back because of fear, this will be your finest hour. This will be the time of great multiplication of this ministry. And... An exponential increase is coming to this ministry because of the stamp of approval from heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Why don't you just stand up right now and just begin to praise the Lord. Just begin to speak out. Say yes to those parts that you are identifying with. They're for you. These, these promises are for you. Just reach right now up into heaven and start pulling these things down into your own life. Things that you heard tonight, just pull them down. Pull them down. Pull them down. Pull them down. For those of you who are here that you knew that was the Lord, the Spirit of God was talking to you in the business arena, just wave your hands right now. Wow, there's a lot of you. Wow. Father, we ask for those strategies from heaven, not to just maintain, but Lord, to even increase in this next season. Lord, we're asking for the season of multiplication on kingdom finance yeah, yeah, yeah. in order to do all that is in your heart to do in the nations of the earth and in Canada. God, m multiply their multiply, seed. Multiply, 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 multiply. Wow, and I, I have feel um this couple here did you say you were from saturday night live what um, does that mean oh it doesn't matter it doesn't okay. matter i don't I, um uh, uh, i i i felt like um you know that I, maybe in your own heart that had to play on words when you called it a gathering on saturday nights that's what i'm assuming that it meant but i feel that you had no idea when you called saturday night live that that come what on. god was going to do that people i, I feel that there's going to come a, a component for media and the creative arts on your church like saturday night live you're going to have a dual anointing the anointing of the kingdom but you're also going to have an anointing i see the underground comedians coming to you i see I see media. I see all kinds of people in the arts. I feel like the Lord says you're going to have to have a school to train up the Christians that are going into those realms of, 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 of communication and media and arts. And Lord, we want to bless. And I feel like even on you, that you got a pretty 
funny bone in your body. You know what I mean? That you're kind of a funny guy. And that God says a merry heart does good like a medicine. And the days are coming yeah. in Canada when people yeah. will be afraid. And they will need the joy of the Lord to strengthen them. I feel like the Lord says that train them up and release the joy of the Lord. There's joy givers, joy givers, joy givers. Joy, and joy, I joy, joy. Like, um, people that have, uh, that have been in massive depression coming to your church and, and getting totally free into the joy of the Lord. Come on. You will have an anointing Steve over Buckland. depression. Steve Buckland. <laughs> Let's just laugh at that. Let's yeah. just laugh at that. We bless them, Lord. We bless yes, what, we do. They, what you are doing. Yes, in their right, house. right. And, and, and Lord, the underground movement. I feel like people. You know, there's places in Hollywood where people just go as underground. I feel like you're going to be an underground church for people coming in and out of the entertainment and uh, uh, kingdom uh, realms. And so we bless. Wow, you wow, 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 wow. Come stand there. with us. Stand with us. Stand with us. Clustering, clustering, keep going. Okay, oh uh, yeah. And Lord, we just want to bless these business people. There is super, like, when everything's going down, I feel like the opposite is going to happen for kingdom people. Right. Like, there is that Joseph revelation, how to store up, how to maintain, and not only to, to um, you know, maintain in the time of famine, but actually be so blessed that barns are full in the time of famine. Come on. So that you can release it to Ho! many nations and many people. And Lord, we ask for that kingdom divine strategy right. on them. In right. Jesus name. Do you have something, Tim Paul? Okay. Tonight, something is cracking in the heavens. It's cracking, cracking, cracking wide open. The Lord said to me that, that this very night, you're going to hear the news. Something is breaking in the financial realm tonight. I, I can tell you. I heard the cracking of the heavens tonight. So if you just lay your hand on your wallet, something's Thank cracking you, tonight in the heavens. Supernatural. I prophesy finance. kingdom finance. I come against the God of mammon is being shaken tonight. The spirit of mammon is being broken tonight. The spirit of greed and hoarding is being broken Thank tonight. God. The God of gods, the Lord of lords, is shaking the spirit, the evil one called the spirit of mammon. He's shaking in his boots tonight. Something is breaking even tonight. Watch it. Watch what the Lord's going to do. Watch what he's going to do. Watch what he's about to do in your finances. People that have nothing will have much. Churches that have nothing will have great. Thank you, missions Jesus. that have nothing will blessing, have much. Blessing. Those that have down. missions to young people have much. People that are feeding the poor will have houses and barns full. Watch what God's about to do. Amen. And we just came from Detroit, a testimony on that. And two times we've been in Detroit which is like the most bankrupt city, the most recently terribly yeah. bankrupt city in all of yeah. America. Both times we were there, uh, our church phoned, and uh, it, our local church that we've been pastoring for 30 years, phoned and said, oh, the, we had uh, an extraordinary extra giving today. We had $35,000 extra given in the offering. That was the last time we were in Detroit. And this time, we phoned and be, our Be A Hero yesterday phoned us and said, oh, I had a, a man phone and he said he wanted to give $5,000 dollars to our home in the Philippines on the sex trade and as he was talking to him, he got excited our, our guy from Be a Hero and said yeah what we want to do next is build a bakery and a, um, a cafe t- for the girls that are coming out of the sex trades not just homes to house them but a bakery and he said okay I'll give an extra thirty five thousand dollars for that so both times <laughs> I mean, in the days when everybody else is going down, the kingdom of God is going up. In the days of great darkness, we will see a great light. So uh, I feel also, uh, yeah, um, do you two know each other? Uh, little, they're friends. Okay, I, I, I feel that, that this word is for both of you. I don't know if you come from similar places or even different places, but I saw this, um, uh, when I looked over here, I saw the two spies, Joshua and Caleb. And I felt like, you know, um, you know, they were looking for the promised land. They were looking for where the anointing was. They were looking for where the promises of God were going to be. And I felt like you guys have that spirit of Joshua and Caleb to spy out the land, to see what the spirit of God is doing and to know what he's doing. And that you guys, you too, have the anointing to bring the good report. You're not those negative people that go back saying, oh, man, there's so many problems. You're going to go back and say, hey, there is there's a land flowing with milk and honey and God is going to use you as ambassadors for the kingdom of God in this region. God is going to use you uh, to bring people and when I said red and yellow, black and white I saw 
just even in this facility, smaller teams and gatherings of black people coming under the revelation, the prophetic spirit in this place. And I feel like there's going to be gatherings or roundtables or strategy things here uh, that you are going to be part of being an ambassadorial call to, to give the good report. And so, Lord, we want to bless these sisters that love you, that know you, God, that, that know when your spirit's moving. And because you, sister, there is a long obedience in the same direction in you, man. You, Those that know their God will be strong and do exploits. And uh, the Lord just spoke to me. He said, she knows me. She knows me. She knows me. And I moved at the sound of her voice. And I saw you in prayer, but not just like superficial prayer. I saw you in deep in deep places in the spirit of prayer. And I saw you as one who, when you look at a storm, you know what I mean, when things are even in trouble all around, you can see Jesus in the middle of the storm. You can fix your eyes on him, and you can actually move the boat. You can move everybody else in the boat. You can move it to align with the purposes of God. And I saw you as one that brings alignment in the spirit, no matter what the season and no matter what's going on, because you can go deeper, deep, deep, deep places in the spirit. Lord, we want to bless the groan. Wow, Lord, wow, we want to bless wow, the wow, things wow. too deep to utter. Right. Lord, we want to bless the prophetic intercession. Oh. And Lord, the, the fact that you listen to her, you respond to the sound of her voice in Jesus' name. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer. The Lord's healing you, my the sister. There's something Christ. being healed inside. Just put yeah. your hand on your stomach. There's a healing going Shabu, on. Kariyan. Your digestive you, system Jesus. will never be sucked. Thank right you, now, Jesus. the Holy Ghost is virtue. on your digestive healing system. Virtue. Something's Whoa, being replaced Shabu, in your body. Deeper. God's being deeper. replaced in your body. There's a healing in your digestive system tonight. You're never going to be the same after this very moment. Electricity of God's replacing something. Something's being blocked is being opened in Jesus' name. Feel a fire going right in your belly right now. Right there. Fire's on. Actually, I want to get prayer. I'm on my way to Taiwan for three, three crusades, wow. north to south in Taiwan. Wow. So I, my wife and I need some prayer right now. Here we go. Okay. Come on. Come on, Apostle Russ and Maeve. Come. Let's lay hands on them. They're Let's going three weeks now. Him. This is a no, commissioning a few days. center. For three weeks to Taiwan. Two weeks, three conferences. Come on, let's let's see the yes. Spirit of God break out Lord, in these Asian countries. For the prophetic spirit, Lord, to fill him, to come on him. Lord, we ask for a very great clarity in the word of the Lord as yeah. he ministers in Taiwan. Lord, we pray, God, that you would use them very, yes, very powerfully. Yes, God. Let, let Lord, power come. Woo! And Lord, Power. we ask God for the Spirit to move on the women. Yeah. Women who prophesy, the come company on. of women. On God. Diane. Oh, on Lord, Diane. Let fire come. News will be a Let great fire help. come. Woo, woo, woo. In Jesus name. Father, we pray right now for apostolic authority and prophetic on Jim Paul and Diane, that every place the sole of their foot goes, that it would be breakthrough, that you will grant them uh, the angels of the Lord round about them. We pray for the ministry of the winds of the Spirit. Acts 2, the wind. We ask for the wind of the Spirit, that they will move in power, that healings will break out, that salvations will come, impartations will be everywhere, and that you will protect them from all evil in Jesus' name. I saw a tripod. Wow. And, and, and the feet were going down deep in the ground. The Lord says, no, I'm going to get your, your roots down deep. He said, I'm going to bring some balance to a few things. I'm going to bring you out in a new realm of my power, a new realm of healing, says the Lord. Note, I'm going to open up some doors that seem like they were closed in time gone by. Note that the foundation now is going to be with a lot of intercessory prayer all around the roots and setting the foundation, says the Lord. And note that there's going to be people that are going to be back home that are going to be praying. The Lord said that there's been a problem, a situation with the building and you hit like a you, you, you had three or four times where you hit kind of like a, a, a backdrop and the Lord says I want you to know it's not a dead end just a detour the Lord said I'm going to move you around a little bit in the season ahead and he says I begin to move you around you know you're going to go here and there and everywhere three new openings are going to come each one on a different continent says the Lord but know that the nations of the world shall open up and the continent shall be and the places that you shall be strong shall be in Europe especially says the Lord and even something happening in Asia and even in South America. No, says the Lord, I am going to increase the base and increase the foundation, even in your absence, even in your travels, says the Lord. Yeah, and I feel like 
One of the Fantastic. most important things about this trip is connections. Come on. I saw doors opening and closing, and I, but they were not like closing in a bad way. They were just like uh, moving. I saw movement of doors. And I feel that this trip you are going to have some new connections that you've never had before. There's going to be some strategic divine connections um, that, that are, 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 are going to, uh, and you are going to connect people in Taiwan that have never been connected before. Wow. Wow. I also wow. see your ability to gather people to bring for a greater thing for the future, and you are are going to connect, 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 connect for greater gatherings, for transformation in the future. And so, Lord, we bless, Lord, the divine connections in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's just give God a great big clap. That's awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> really, really good. We're going to hear from Stacy more tomorrow night and the other one. It's fantastic. And uh, I just want to say uh, it prophetically, you know, um, I remember back, it was years ago, and we were in great big meetings in Sunderland, England with Ken Gott and Mike Bickle. Paul Kane. And I remember <coughs> Paul Kane was ministering with incredible words of knowledge. <coughs> this one's better? Yes, sir. Great. And as he did that, you know, uh, so many different words were given out. But then he finally said, you know, I, I see something on everybody. <coughs> and he said, God has a word for you all. But, you know... Our time limitations are such, he says, but he says after 50, 25, 100, you know, many of them are the same. And you know when you hear something that it's for you. You know that. You say, God, that's me. I know that. <clears throat> well, you have every legal right to reach up and take that. <clears throat> what was spoken over apostles, Russ, Russ and Maeve, many of those things are, are, are <clears throat> you know, relevant in your life. You can take those. You can say, yes, that's me. I want, I, God bless me with that. And, um, you know, it says of Jabez, he was more, he was more, um, <clears throat> what, than his brothers. He was more honorable because he said, oh, God, that you would bless me. Bless me indeed. Give me land, large tracts of land. And he and God heard him and gave him the desires of his heart. And he was more honorable than his brothers because he, because he, because he, he pushed in for the blessing. Like Jacob pushed in for the blessing. He said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go unless you bless me. He pushed in and contended. He wrestled for that which was already promised through his family line. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he wrestled for it in the application of his own life. So I just want to say tonight, what has been spoken tonight, that's for you. You're in this meeting. This is yours. So, Father, tonight we want to just pray application on every heart. <clears throat> every heart in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Good. Thank you. You were awesome. Let's give a hand for our worship team tonight. <laughs> Great to see Jim Paul. <laughs> the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with our spirits. Amen and amen. Good. Well, it's interesting that you should mention Taiwan. <clears throat> and um, I, I've got the title here tonight, and I want to really impart to you tonight something from the heart of God. Good news and the great harvest, Psalm 67. I'll be fine. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> and I believe that we're in um, a very transitional time. What Apostle Russ mentioned tonight, <clears throat> and even the word on them, is what is stirring, you know, in the many, many prophecies that came tonight, is we actually are in another dimension of the transition. We actually are. And uh, so we're talking about the good news, the whole... The, 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 the big picture of the gospel, and we're talking about the great harvest, where we are right now. If you could just show me that next one. By the way, what's your name on the PowerPoint? Say it again. Akisha or Akisha? Akisha, well, that's a beautiful name. Just show me the next one, Akisha. Good. What's that? Okay, just put it onto your uh, desktop or something, and it'll probably... Well, we'll catch up. <clears throat> so um, we believe that even this year, 2014, we've entered into another dimension of the times and seasons of God. <clears throat> I was in Korea around March, April, May, I can't remember which, for a few weeks, and we were doing a lot of meetings, and we were 
Uh, I was just listening again to the prophetic history of Mike Bickle. And the reason I was doing that because February 14th was a very unique time in the body of Christ. Uh, most of you would probably know Bob Jones, prophet and servant of the Lord, went to be with Jesus for his final reward on February 14th this year, <clears throat> 2014. Uh, he always said he was God's valentine. He said, I'm his valentine. I'm his valentine. Four, February 14th was a special day for him. And <clears throat> as I was listening to the prophetic history of Mike Bickle and IHOP this year again, for the first time in, well, really ever, the, the, the many components of the message and the, and the seasonal dimension of this came into focus. I had never captured it before, although I've listened to it, probably nuances of the prophetic history, at least 10 different versions, you know, 20 different times. I mean, I had the written transcripts back in 1996 when we were leading the 40-day fast. But I never put the pieces together till this year, just this year. And suddenly I realized that the, you know, the, the life-death experience where Bob Jones was taken into the presence of God in, 19, in August 1975 when he died and went into God's presence. And uh, the Lord spoke to him and says, Bob, it's not your time yet. And I've got a 14-minute version of this on one of our CDs called Open Heavens Volume 1. It's 14 minutes. And it's got all the, um, <clears throat> the music behind it. It's incredible. But the Lord said, Bob, it's not your time yet. <clears throat> and uh, he says, I want you to go back. And Bob said, I don't want to go back. They's persecuting me down there. <clears throat> and the Lord said, no, Bob. And he said, look. And he pointed to individuals crowds of people going off into outer darkness and they would have one chance to look at the eyes of jesus before they went off of a kind of a moving conveyor belt off into outer darkness and blackness and he said would you go back for them and bob looked at the people going into outer darkness he said i'd go back for one soul and the lord said this i'm not sending you back for one soul i'm sending you back to prepare my leaders for a harvest of a billion souls. A billion souls. <clears throat> That's a lot. And uh, then he touched him, and Bob immediately was going, as it were, back, backwards in space, and he came to his room. His spirit was hovering above his body. He saw two resurrection angels on either side of his body. They were, they were prophesying, and they were touching his body, and they were saying, Look! Now it begins, and they pointed down toward Kansas City, the center, central part of Kansas City, <clears throat> downtown, and they said it always must begin in the heart of a nation, the heart of a man. And they talked about the glory going at the speed of light from Kansas City going to the nations and so many other prophecies. And, then, and um, he was actually saved from dying, and that was just you know, 40 years ago, 39 years ago. So, um, so he began to prophesy concerning this coming great harvest. Now, that was 1975. He never met Mike Bickle until uh, around December 82 and 83. So it was about seven or eight years. He had upwards of 100 prophecies and visions and encounters. When I say prophecies and visions, we're not talking, you know, <clears throat> kind of uh, simple grade prophecies. We're talking where he's taken into, into ecstatic trances and states where he sees the future, things happen, specific words. I mean, measurable, measurable, you know, deep stuff. You can read about <clears throat> some of it in this book here, Welcoming a Visitation. I catalog some of it concerning the 1994 outpouring. Bob said to Mike, he said, <clears throat> you know, he told him these hundred things, and it was all unto... You know, you'll start a movement. In, you know, he said the first four things. He says, son, you know, are you an intercessor, son? And Mike said, no, uh, not really. I don't really, you know, jive to that. I'm more of an evangelist. He said, well, you're going to be, he says, uh, are you a, um, you know, do you pray for Israel, son? <clears throat> he says, no, I've never prayed for Israel in my life. He says, well, you're going to, you're going to raise up an Israel movement. He says, are you a um, worship leader, son? And he goes, no. Uh, no, he says, oh boy, he says, the Lord told me you'll be dull, but not that dull. And he said, 
He says, are you a youth leader? He said, no, I'm a senior pastor. He says, well, you're going to lead a youth movement. It's going to be on the spirit of the tabernacle of David 24-7. You're going to circle the globe with prayer and intercession. And he gave them all these different words. And that was the very first encounter with Bob Jones and Mike Pickle. Now, the point of that is to say this, is that <clears throat> all these things that have happened are all connected. The word about the 1994 outpouring was the first phase of wine, you know, wind or fire and wind. It's the reversal, Acts 2. The wine was prophesied in 1984 that it would come in 1994. That's 20 years ago. That's history. It happened. It, it, it refreshed the entire known world. But that's not the end. That is the beginning. That's not the completion that's just the beginning of the ongoing explosion of what God's doing. He talked about the uh, spirit of prayer and worship in the tabernacle of David 24-7. That began, I guess, 1996 or 97. That's been going like for 15 years or more. That was prophesied, but that is only unto the prayer for the great harvest and the explosion of healing that will take place worldwide. <clears throat> that was all prophesied. The, the next phase is this incredible phase of fire that's coming on the earth. And the fire, a zeal and repentance, a fire of God revival, and then it will be the ministry of winds overlapping. And winds is miraculous. It's the, it's the angels. It's the angelic moving. And all this is going to take place. <clears throat> and right now, uh, we are in the transition. I, I listened last week. I was at Pasadena. We heard... Uh, Pastor Cheon, uh, for our movement, HIM, Harvest International Ministries, brought out one of the Chinese apostles. I can't even say his name. Fu Xing Fang. I don't even know his name. <clears throat> I can't even say his name. <laughs> Sounds like Chinese what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese food. Xu Xing Fang. So um, you, you probably haven't even heard of this fellow. 35 years ago, he was dying with three diseases, including tuberculosis. He couldn't move. He could scarcely walk. He was bedridden. Uh, he wanted to commit suicide. His father had died. He knew his mother's heart would be broken. He went to a tree to hang himself <clears throat> and just had mercy on his mother and knew he couldn't do it and went back to his hut in depression and dejection. And somebody came by and said, what you need is Jesus. You need Jesus. The person put him on his bicycle, rode him six miles to a believer in a, in a village nearby. They led him to Jesus. They prayed for his sicknesses. He laid on the cot. The next morning, he was entirely healed of three life-debilitating <clears throat> uh, diseases, including tuberculosis. He walked back six miles on his own power. That was 35 years ago. He began to preach the gospel with power. I mean, we just met him last week. He began to preach the gospel with power, and now they have something in the, in the magnitude of 50 million believers in their, in their network. <clears throat> last month he sent, uh, or he said a few months ago they went on an outreach. They sent out two less than 20-year-olds, like under 20-year-olds, two girls. They planted 28 churches in the villages in one month. This is under 20s. He says they began to go from the rural areas to plant churches in the urban areas. Shanghai, they planted 500 churches in Shanghai. <clears throat> they train 1,000 missionaries a year in 50 Bible college, full-time missionaries. They said to us in America and <clears throat> Canada, they said, you know, you gave your best and you sowed into China. We are your fruit. We are your fruit. And he said... Thank you. You've left part of the task for us. We are now going to take on the Muslim world. We are unafraid of the Muslims. They, they love China, and we love them, and we are, going to, to, we are fearless. We are going into the midst of bombs and martyrs. We're fearless. We will march to Jerusalem. We will see the Middle East one to Jesus, and we are sending out millions of missionaries to the Middle East. 
I just, he just said that like seven days ago. We were just right there. And uh, they said right now, every single day in China, every single day, 30,000 Chinese are becoming believers every single day. 30,000. You might say, while we were sleeping. <clears throat> Their goal is by 2030, which is 16 years from now, 2030, their goal is to be 30% believer in China, which their numbers will reach 400 million rabid, zealous Christians. Okay, get this in perspective. We're talking, we're talking a body of believers bigger than all the people of North America. And they're all fresh Christians. So just getting an understanding of the magnitude of what we're, what we're in right now, what's happening in the earth, there's this massive shift that's taking place. So <coughs> that was all way by way of introduction. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> so the season of global blessing, <coughs> we believe uh, it, we're in it. And so when Bob Jones was dying, so he's in the hospital, he has a broken femur his leg he's on dialysis etc two two phenomenal things happen one is that in the middle of the night it was that remember it was that arctic vortex that was going on you remember that last february so the hospital where he was was snowed in the senior leader of the hospital had to sleep in his room that night he was on his cot and he heard a strange sound at the door, like somebody was pushing the codes. And the door opened, and in walks Bob Jones, <clears throat> physically. And he's in a hospital gown, and he's dancing. He says, look at my feet. I can dance. <clears throat> and the guy is just, like, stunned and shocked and said, you know, what are you doing? He said, well, the Lord spoke to me, told me he wanted to talk, give me a message to some people, but I don't want to. So I'm going to give them to you, and you're going to tell them. He said, take out a pen and paper. So the hospital leader, administrator, took out a pen and paper and started writing all these words to, you know, Rick Joyner and to Mike Bickle and to this and that. And he was writing them down. And he says, now concerning Asia. He says, write this down. And the guy began to write it down. And uh, he said, okay, that's all. Goodbye. Turned around, walked out the door. And the guys, the, the hospital ministry is freaking out. He's just, ah. <clears throat> so he goes back to sleep. He wakes up in the morning, and there's the paper with all the messages that he wrote. He gave this, he, he was so freaked out, he never talked about it for days, but later, about a week later, he gave it to Rick Joyner. And Rick has it. The paper with the messages, and when he gets to the part about Asia, the script turns into Asian script which he doesn't know. He's a Baptist. This guy's a Baptist. Something like a Baptist. A very conservative. Hmm? But a nice Baptist. <clears throat> so he, he gets up and he goes to the, the room and he says to Bonnie, Bob's wife, he says, Bob came to my room last night with messages from God. She goes, no, he didn't. He goes, yeah, he really did. And he, I wrote him down. She said, no, he didn't. He's got a broken leg. He's a, he was in bed. He, he passed away last night. <clears throat> I just believe it's kind of like, you know, the Jews believe that for three days the spirit of the person could be around in the room. I just believe that, you know, I mean, heaven was just right there, the veil, and he was kind of in between both. <clears throat> oh, yeah, he just kind of gave one last prophecy and then took off. So while, while he's going, while he's going, Bob Hartley, who is the disciple of Bob Jones and with Mike Bickle since 82, and we were just with him last week as well. Incredible. You go on the Internet, just Bob Hartley, and you can listen to this dream. And as, as at, at about 4 in the morning when Bob's passing into Jesus' presence, he has this dream. And you can go on and you can listen. It comes four nights in a row, four dreams with messages for the world. <clears throat> you can go and listen to them. They're incredible. So... Um, <clears throat> Pardon me. So um, Bob Hartley sees Bob at a great football field. And Bob has over his shoulder a mailbag because he always had the mailman prophecy. 
<clears throat> and in the mail bag were candy bars. And the candy bars had within them the DNA of love, hope, and transformation. And he was walking up and down the side of the field, and he was encouraging all the coaches. And all the coaches were there, and he says, come on. You need to get out there and play the game of life. Play the game of life. <clears throat> and uh, your game card for the game of life is Psalm 67. Psalm 67 will be your game card as we go into this game of life. And he began to hand out candy bars to all the coaches. And the coaches were so excited, they went on the field. And then the field changed and became this massive world of, you know, like cities and nations. And they began, I, something turned me down. I, I don't know what, something just moved. Can you turn it back up? And all these, uh, that's better. And all these um, cities were being touched. And it was as though they were being healed and saved and salvation was breaking out. And everybody was excited. And then Bob just turned around. He said to Bob Hartley, he says, well, he says, I have to be going now. I'm going up a level. And as I'm going up a level, you have to go up a level. And he turned and he waved and he walked into the sunset. And that in, re in real time, that's when he died. <clears throat> that was the dream Bob Hartley had. He turned, got up that morning and there it was all over Facebook, etc. So Psalm 67 I was really encouraged. Uh, you're kind of going, Psm 67, Psalm 67. I, I am going to tell you what Psalm 67 is. Don't worry, you get to know. So I jumped into Psalm 67 and I began to uh, study it probably <clears throat> well, at least 25 or 30 hours on Psalm 67. But I had just spent another 40, 50 hours on related subjects of Psalm 67. And uh, so I really believe this is a massive word of the Lord to you today for this great move of the Spirit. Okay, so we'll take, you know, 30 minutes on it and then we'll pray for you. <clears throat> Has been called the missionary psalm. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Make his face shine on us. So that, purpose clause, your ways may be made known on the earth, your salvation among all the nations. <clears throat> may the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity. You guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. <clears throat> the land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still. So that all the ends of the earth will fear him. This is a massive psalm. I had no comprehension how great it was. <clears throat> In fact, when I was younger, I think after one of my saved experiences at Bible camp, <clears throat> I made a deal with a guy. We'd read a chapter of the Bible every day. Sometimes we'd come out in from work like at midnight or 1230, 1 o'clock. If we were really tired, I think this was the psalm I always read if I had to tuck one chapter in before sleep. <laughs> it was this one. <clears throat> but it's loaded. Now, you know where this comes from. The Lord be merciful, gracious, uh, turn his face toward us, etc. You know that that comes from Numbers 6, <clears throat> which is the ironic blessing. The ironic blessing, you know this. Click, the Lord bless you, keep you, causes, click, cause his face to shine on you, turn his face toward you, give you peace. Now, this is probably the greatest passage of the Bible pre uh, the Lord's Prayer and said more than any other passage in the whole Bible. This was God's, as it were, covenantal blessing, his word, a promise. He said, Moses, tell Aaron this is how you bless the people. Say this. In other words, when you say this over the people, he said, so I will put my name into the Israelites and I will bless them. There is a promised blessing on this, on this prayer, this decree. Now, that's huge. And, of course, that should cause you to want to lay hands on yourself every single day. 
every day you lay hands on yourself and you bless yourself because when you bless yourself and others, you're going to be more blessed. And, 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 and you can tell I've done it a lot. That's where my hair went. I just kept blessing. Back up. Back up. <clears throat> okay. So this is a phenomenal prayer. I can't get into this too much right now. But suffice to say, this is a blessing prayer. Now, click. you know that you have this one. Why? Because when you come into Jesus, you get all the promises that go to Abraham. Okay, let, let's just settle that right now. I do not believe in replacing Israel with the New Testament church. I don't believe that at all. Israel's still Israel. But I believe that we get to get in on everything they have. So all the blessings of Abraham are yours in Christ Jesus. So everything God said to him, you get. Now let me just say this. You are certainly not going to get less than Abraham got. Whatever he got, you're not getting less than that. You're going to get that plus. <clears throat> Progressive revelation. Now that's huge. That's huge. So... Uh, the promise of the Holy Spirit, for instance, you know that, is for all that are afar off. Everybody who's going to come, which means you. You can just put your name right in there in Acts 2. That's me. I'm afar off. I'm, I'm the ends of the earth. Moose, grizzly bear. That's it. Hamilton. <laughs> Click. <clears throat> so this is, this is afar off. Now, <clears throat> go ahead, three. <clears throat> Again. Good. I just want to say... Um, <clears throat> We, in the New Testament times, <clears throat> we focus a lot on God's activities such as forgiving sin, rescuing from oppression, you know, saving us, etc. A lot of spiritual stuff. The Old Testament focused on a lot more earthy stuff, human stuff, where you live stuff. Stuff like fruitful harvest, fertility, which is children, health, prosperity, and all those related areas. <clears throat> now, as we come and look at this thing, <clears throat> he says, oh, that you would bless us. Uh, Kina, every time I go like that, you just flick it, okay? Okay, <clears throat> so you watch, and I'll just go like that, because then I don't have to say click, click, click. Okay, <clears throat> the blessing, the blessing we're talking about here is physical. Now watch this, Exodus 23, this is very important. God says to Moses, tell them, do not bow down to their other, other gods or worship them or follow them or their practices, but rather demolish these false gods. Worship the Lord your God, watch it now, and his blessing, here it is, his blessing will be on what? Your food and water. Guys, your food and water. You can't get any more basic than food and water. This is your food and water. Now, here we have a refugee camp in the middle of the desert. Two million guys in the middle of the desert. A refugee camp. And he says, you follow me, and when you go into the land, <clears throat> I'm going to bless your food and water. You're refugees seeking a new life. You're going into a place that's inhabited by giants, jackals and animals. But I'm going to bless your food and water. You haven't sown a crop. You haven't put up a fence. You haven't dislodged anybody. But I'm going to be with your food and water. Come on. I'm going to be with your body. I'm going to take away sickness from among you. Now, this is huge, guys. And by the way, um, we're not strangers. Stacy's going to maybe talk tomorrow night on healing. We are not strangers to sickness and calamity. We're not strangers to that. And as pastors of 30 years, I do understand the tender areas when you start talking about things like this, what we're actually talking about, and the areas that we're dancing upon. I, I understand. I understand there's people here who have miscarried. I understand that there's people here who can't have children. I understand that there's people that have been terminal you know, many, many years and have had people terminal. I, I do understand that. But I'm trying to say this. If we don't speak what God speaks and set a new standard, a new decree, a new hope for, 
what you'd hope for. Psalm 67. If we don't understand it, believe it, and start to actually decree for it, we never will get it. We must speak what it says, even though it's hurtful for us who have been in the valleys and, and been subjected to, you know, misery. <clears throat> I will take away sickness. None of you will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you full lifespan. Come on. Now, this is the Bible. This is the Bible. Deuteronomy 7, he says this. I will bless you. I'm going to bless you. There's that word. I'm going to bless you. Psalm 67, I'm going to bless you. He says, I'm going to increase your numbers. You, you, you do a study of uh, blessing and fruitfulness in the Bible. Just just study it. Called blessing and see how many times it's connected to fruitfulness, which is children. Numbers of children. Not 2.2. Okay, numbers of children. There's a definite correlation between blessing and children. I, I rode in the airplane to Dearborn or to uh, Detroit. I'm coming in. I'm sitting next to a guy. He looks Middle East. I says, hey, how are you? Good. Where are you from? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Wow. What are you doing here? Going to school. Really? How old are you? 20. Wow. How is it for you? Oh, it's okay. I said, are you lonely? Well, I was at first. I said, you have a family? Yeah. Are they here? No. How many of your family? Oh, I have 17 brothers and sisters. I said, 17 brothers and sisters. How many wives does your husband, your father have? Oh, just three. I said, really? I said, so what's the breakdown? He says, well, my mother has ten, the other wife has five, and the other one has two. I said, really? He says, what do you think about many wives? Hmm. I said, what do you think? Oh. And away we went. <clears throat> I will bless the fruit of your womb and the crops of your land. You'll be blessed more than any other people. None of your men or women will be childless. Come on, come on. None of your men and women will be childless. Guys, this is the Bible. This is, this is the promise to Abraham. <clears throat> none of your women will be childless. None of, your, uh, none of your livestock will be without young. I will keep you free of every disease. <clears throat> so here we have it. Blessings are food supply. This is jobs and bills. Jobs and bills. Jobs and bills, food and water, health, physical well-being, reproductive, longevity, you'll live long, long lifespan. These words are your life, he says, and peace. <clears throat> now, let me just say this. If the God of Israel, Yahweh, didn't have this catalog of blessings, no one would have wanted to be with the God of Israel. Because all the gods claim this. I mean, this is standard, you know, uh, forgive me, this is, this is standard God fare. If you have a God who doesn't work on earth, it's not going to catch on. No one's into that. I mean, you don't break into a culture saying, I'll forgive your sins and you'll go to heaven one day and everything will be good. But in the meantime, you're probably going to be poor. You're probably going to have no food. Everybody's going to be mad at you all the time. Nothing's really going to work. But just be assured, your prayers are actually doing something in heaven. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't bite. That doesn't take off. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32, 39. These are not just idle words for you, but they're your life. By them, you're going to live long. Okay. By the way, I'm just going to insert this. Go ahead. Three. Uh, Hebrews 10. I'll just go ahead. The next. Okay. Just so we know, in case you're thinking, well, what if I don't do it right and I don't get this stuff? You don't have to do it right. Jesus did it right. Okay? Jesus did it right, for by one sacrifice he, Jesus, is making perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies about this. This is the covenant I'm going to make. I'm going to put my law in their hearts. I'm going to write their law in their minds. Then he adds, their sinless and lawless acts I will remember no more, and where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Jesus makes the sacrifice. You come into him. Every shortcoming that you and I have, we pray. He continues to forgive us, and he continues to bless us in the land. 
Okay, so your decree and your call is what what John G. Lake called the strong man's gospel. The strong man's gospel. Come on. The strong man's gospel. I'll describe that in just a moment. Right here, James 5. Now, this is a very uh, problematic text, one that most New Testament churches have a very difficult time with, and we don't like to preach on it. And uh, it's just, are you doing this tomorrow, by the way? Probably. Okay. Um, Verse 13 is a really good verse. Is anyone in trouble? Let him pray. That's what James says. You're in trouble? Pray. Pray. Is anyone happy? Sing your prayers. Is anyone sick? Get your friends to pray. James somehow believes the answer to everything is just pray about it. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And if they have sinned, it will be forgiven. Notice the connection between sin and forgiveness and sickness. Therefore, confess your sins one to another. Pray to be healed. Why? Because the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Now, that passage right there is quite problematic for most churches because, you know, John Wimber started out 20, 30 years ago, and the Lord showed him that he was to pray for healing, and he became, you know, the great apostle of healing and brought vineyard to the whole wide world and awesome, awesome, awesome. But when he started, you know, he, he, did, he, prayed, he preached... He said he told the Lord, I will preach on this till we get it. And he began to preach on healing, you know, a series, like four or five, six-part series. No healings. Two months, no healings. Keep preaching. Six months, no healings. Keep preaching. Whole year, no healings. Keep preaching. He said it went on and on and on into year two, preaching on healing every single Sunday, no healings. He was so embarrassed and so discouraged, he, he, he literally, he couldn't even get the prayer team to come forward and pray for people for healing because no one ever got healed. He had to put a curtain and say, go behind the curtain and we'll pray for you behind the curtain. And finally, he just told the Lord, he says, I'm not going behind that dang curtain again. The Lord gave him a verse, I, the Lord, dwell behind the curtain. <clears throat> So he kept on, he preached for two years. And then the breakthrough happened. And then the breakthrough happened. And now we know, you know, John Wimber, power evangelism, all over the whole wide world. He, cha- he was one of the most dominating influential forces in the Western world of Christianity. Now, the strong man's gospel is this <clears throat> Elijah was a human, just as you are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. It did not rain for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave the rain. Now, why does James put this in? I didn't know either. And then we had a great traumatic tragedy in our family, and I studied this for 100 hours, and I think I figured out why. What he's saying is this. Elijah, he just chose Elijah as one of the great shining stars, but if you, you you look at Hebrews 11... Uh, you, you could pick 20, 30, 40, 50 of them. These, these super saints who saw signs and wonders, miracles, healings. Now here's the point. If he's a human and he did it, one guy on earth that can do this proves that it's possible. And if it's possible for this human, it's possible for you. That's what James is saying. He's saying this is within the realm of your, not just possibility, the promises of God. And therefore, some who have taken it at face value and have pressed into the strong man's gospel have gotten to the place where they've actually brought heaven to earth. And as John G. Lake says, if it's possible for this one, it's possible for that one. If it's possible for William Branham, it's possible for you. If it's possible for the thousands in the healing movements, it's possible for you. And therefore, Psalm 67 is a call to walk in the blessing that you have been promised in all the areas of your life. 
That's the good news. The good news isn't God has a wonderful plan for your life, but unfortunately you've sinned and really mucked it up. And uh, so he sent Jesus to die on the cross, and if you accept him, you'll be forgiven. But if you don't, you're going to burn in hell forever. That's not such great news. And now stop doing everything, wear a hat, and go for 60 years and be bored and then go to heaven. That's not great news. That's how I came in. I was in the Plymouth Brethren. Do you know what those are? That's how I was. Four generations. Stacy, at 16, was saved. She used to pray in her university dorm with a, with a doily on her head. When I got saved, I was 18, I said, all right. I was a rugby player, freestyle skier, you know, hot car. Uh, you know, and I said, okay, okay. I just, I said this, okay, I will... I will forever be bored and stop living and just go to heaven. That's how I got saved. I really did. I said, okay, I'll be alone forever. I'll drive Mainers in town all by myself. I'll go to no more rugby. I won't sing rugby songs anymore. And I'll just stop singing forever. That's how I got saved. We didn't even have music in our church, guys. Can you imagine? 18, no music. That's not good news. The good <laughs> Click. Go again. Good news. Good news is that you're blessed. Blessed why? Why? So that so that your ways will be made known on the earth. Your ways will be known on the earth. Now I like this. He says your ways and salvation. The word salvation is in the strongest concordance. It's called saving health. Come on, your saving health will be made known. Your saving health will be made known in the nations. The, the the gospel is all about saving health. It's about physically taking you through life blessed. Look at this. Show this. Uh, Exodus fourteen thirteen. I'm going to be seven more minutes. Moses said to the people, "Do not fear. Stand by and see what the salvation of the Lord." Salvation of the Lord. You know what it was? Total deliverance from their enemies who were going to kill them. Egyptians were going to kill them. Saving health, salvation is deliverance. Literally. Not spiritually, physically. Saving health. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Click. <clears throat> Verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel. Same word, saved. By the word, you know what that word, what that word means in the Hebrew? It means Yeshua. It means Jesus. So that your Jesus will be made known in the nations. Your Yeshua will be made known in the nations. Song of Moses. The Lord has become my strength and my song. He has become my Yeshua, my salvation, my saving. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Now the psalmist prays. He goes, oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Let the peoples praise you. No, not good enough. Let all the peoples praise you. Come on, let all the peoples praise you. Everyone's going to praise you. The Gentiles are going to praise you. The islands are going to praise you. The Asians are going to praise you. The Indians are going to praise you. The black men are going to praise you. The white barbarians from Europe are going to praise you. <clears throat> Again. And why will they praise you? Because they're going to observe this people. They're going to see. For it will show your wisdom and your understanding among the nations. Watch this. And they will say, surely, 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 this is a great nation. Surely, this is a great people. Can you believe these guys? What people is so wise and understanding? And what people has God so close to them as this? Who has God that lives with them like these people? Wow. We want into that. That's what we want. Now, here's the, so what Bob Jones gave us as the game card is this. If you don't walk in this blessing and people can't see it around you, they won't want what you've got. They want what Hollywood's got. They want what Wall Street's got. They want what these guys, because this, if this doesn't work, they don't want it. Psalm 67 is all about you getting blessed so that the people look at you and they say, wow, this is a wise and noble people. And who is a people that has God? Who affects their marriages? Who affects their fertility? Who affects their jobs and careers? Who affects their favor? Who affects their bodies like this? We want that. <clears throat> we want that. Oh, the nations are going to be glad and sing for joy. Why? Because when God steps in, he begins to judge righteously. And it's incredible. 
back up one. And then he says this, and then what's going to happen? What's going to happen? The earth is going to yield its harvest. I did a massive, huge study on healing. When the earth gets healed, when you get healed, you get better. When the earth gets healed, it brings forth crops. The healing of the earth produces abundance. It produces fecundity. It produces massive growth. The more blessing comes to the nations, and God blesses the nation, the nation brings forth more fruit. If you want your radishes to grow, decree blessing. Radishes be blessed. (laughs) And he says this, and then, and then, God will bless us. Yes, let God continue to bless us. He says, he ends by saying, okay, great, the nation's yet. God bless me again. Just bless me again. Bless me again, and God will bless us. And what will happen, the last phrase of the chapter is this, all the nations of the earth will fear him. This is the global outpouring. This is the transition that we are in. Psalm 67 is your game card for the next transitional phrase, a phase as the billion harvest is coming in. The earth is looking at the Chinese. They're being blessed. The earth. We're going to Cuba next week. We're going to meet with um, government officials on Wednesday afternoon and all the denominational leaders of Cuba. We're going to honor the Cuban government. We're bringing in a million Bibles. China is printing many of the Bibles. We're going to see millions saved in Cuba. God is blessing us, and the earth, the earth, it says there, the ends of the earth will fear him. Guys, you're in the biggest harvest you've ever seen. We're in the biggest harvest. What we need to do here in Hamilton is contend Psalm 67 that God will bless us. I close with this. It's God's will to bless Israel. We know that. The Amalekites came. Boo, the bad guys. And they obstructed Israel from getting where they were supposed to go. And Moses said, Joshua, take your men and go fight them. And they went to fight. And Moses went up on the hill with his staff, which was his rod of authority. And it says, when Moses stretched out his staff, the Israelites were winning. What does that mean? Okay, guys. This is not Settlers of Gatan. This is not a risk game. When he says they're winning, that means they are prevailing in battle and the other guys are being killed. When Moses' arms went down, the Amalekites were winning. You know what that means? That means our guys were dying. Our sons and daughters were dying. People are dying. They're dead. Spears and arrows and swords are going into their bodies. They're getting their arms chopped off. Okay, let's just do the math here. Moses is on the hill. God's promised blessing. God's promised prevailing. Moses' arm is up. We're winning. His arms are down. We're losing. So Aaron and her say, sit on this stone, and we'll prop your arms up for 20, the whole day. And they win. Now, there's a lesson there. If we don't walk in the authority that God has already promised and given us, some of our guys are dying. As we walk in the authority that God has prom- promised us, our guys are living But because we're so rich in North America, we can pretty well do it with our money. And we're not pushed until we're really pushed, and then it's probably too late. It's too late. So I would like to put forth to you Psalm 67 is your psalm this year. And you want to study this thing. You want to get into this thing. You want to get into this missionary psalm. You want to get contend for your blessings. You're going to figure out, you know, I want the strong man's gospel and, uh, and God, our God, will bless you still, Jabez. Amen? Pastor, say something. We're going to pray for everybody. Say something, and then we're going to pray for everybody. What something as a father here? Just say something. Father, we thank you for your hand of blessing and for your hand of favor. We thank you for your word and that your word never comes back void. 
And Father, we declare your blessing over your children. We declare your name over them. We declare blessings over their land, over their finances, over their health, over their children, over everything that's near and dear to them. Lord, we declare, we believe it. Father, we hold up the arms. uh, uh, We hold up your arms. We hold up our arms. And we walk in the authority and the power that you've given us, Lord. And we declare victory over the land here in Hamilton. Father, over this region and over this nation, we declare this your hour and your time. Lord, we declare that we will rule and reign with you, that you put everything under our feet. And, Father, that we are seated in heavenly places with you. In Jesus' name. Okay, what we're going to do tonight is this, is we're going to contend. And uh, I, 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 I like those uh, categories. You know, there was uh, food and water. Okay, that's jobs and better jobs. And uh, we're going to contend. Some of you, that's the area we need to contend in. So we're going to do that over on this section over here. Food and water, right over here. Just don't move yet. Some of you, we need to contend for physical healing. Okay, so we're going to do that here. Uh, He said, um, none of your people will miscarry, but you will have children. We're going to contend for barrenness. And you know what? Maybe you're a mother or father, and it's your children. They're they're fighting this. We're gonna pray for them, and we're gonna we're gonna grab hold of God for reproductive promises. Then he said um, he said uh, uh, longevity. I was at I was at a church the other night, and I just had this word of knowledge that you know there are people that somehow they're, they're suffering from a fear of like. I'm going to die. I'm not going to live a long life. My dad died young. My uncle died young. My grandfather died young. I will die young. No, we're going to pray for that and break it right off. Because he said, these are not mere words to you. These are life. And you will live a long lifespan. So we're going to pray for that uh, over here in this section. Long life. We're going to pray for um, barrenness and children here. We're going to pray for healing over here. We're going to pray for jobs and better jobs here. Do we have how many? Do we have some prayer teams people to help us? Let's call up all, all the prayer teams. Jim Paul, come on up here. Jim and Diane, <clears throat> a prayer team people, come. <coughs> Is there any other categories you wanted to cover? Any others we want to pray? Yeah. Financial breakthrough. That's the food and water right over here. Food and water. Financial breakthrough. Relation. That's peace. Shalom. Okay. Good. Stacy, um, right in this section back here, we're going to pray for, uh, uh, it says, so I will give you peace. Peace is the absence of hostilities and there's, you you live together. Peace, some of you are like, I mean, there's enemies attacking you, like CRA, okay? Taxes, bad taxes, Um, relatives. Uh, broken relationships, uh, you know, even in marriages and situations. We're going to pray for peace, and we'll do that in this section over here. Okay, good. So I need prayer prayer people to help. Stacy, where do you want to go? Right here. Okay, good. <clears throat> Healing, come here. Okay. So that's if that's you, come on up. Uh, uh, <clears throat> jobs and better jobs over here, food and water. I'm going to pray for some of these people that have this... Uh, 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 curse of death. Hallelujah. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> Relationships. Hi, buddy. How are you? Pastor, uh, Pastor um, Russ and Maeve. <clears throat> Russ and Maeve. Breakthrough, breakthrough, food and water over here. Pastor Russ is going to come over to the breakthrough over here. Okay, we need some uh, catchers as well. Let's get some people here to help us. Over here on the left is food and water. Okay, where's our where's our prayer people? Where's our catchers? Healing, we're going to pray for all the healing. We're going to pray for relationships. This is incredible. We're contending for our blessing tonight. 
Father, right now as we come full of faith and expectation, we hold up these precious promises tonight. We say, oh God, bless us with food and water. Bless us with health in our bodies. Bless us with children. Bless us by breaking the curse of barrenness. Bless us with longevity, long life in the land. Bless us, we pray, with peace. In Jesus' name, we're going to pray.